In this tutorial series, I'm going to show you guys how I make my Master Chief visors that are nice and chrome on the outside, but still visible through the inside. This is going to be a multi-part series because it's a pretty involved process, and I want to get into some of the details and things I've learned along the way. But let's start at the beginning. Now, one thing we're going to need before we start is what's called a visor buck. Now, this buck is how we're going to form the plastic sheet into the shape of Master Chief's visor. For the visors themselves, they all start as a 0.06 inch thick sheet of PETG plastic. What I'm going to do is peel off the protective sheet on both sides and we will fit it into this metal frame. Now this metal frame is just going to hold the sheet for now, but what we want to do is take our little compressed air gun here and blow off any dust or debris that has landed on the sheet because we want this thing to be as clean as possible for the next step. It's now time to start heating up the PETG sheet so that it's nice and malleable and can be pulled over our visor buck. Now this very high tech and scientific solution that I've come up with is two space heaters laid on their side that heat the plastic from both sides to subsequently warm it up and melt the plastic a little bit. Now initially I only did one space heater but found that it couldn't really heat up the plastic sheet to the temperature that it needs to start to warp and so I added a second space heater underneath and we just placed the plastic sheet in between them. Now one thing I had to do was cut out the safety precautions on these space heaters because if they're tilted on their side they will turn off because you know they don't want to set people's house on fire if they tip over. But after a few minutes the plastic starts to bow and droop downwards and that is exactly what we're looking for. Once it's drooped a few inches I'll put some gloves on, grab the metal frame, and quickly run it over to our vacuum forming station. So here's a quick look at the vacuum forming station. Now the box that the visor buck is sitting on is hollow and it has those holes drilled into the top. Now I bought this off a seller from eBay, but it's a 12 by 12 box and hooked up to it we have a shop vac in suction mode so that when we put the plastic over the buck it's going to suck the air out and form the plastic around the buck. So we quickly turn the vacuum on and then we're going to grab our metal frame with the plastic sheet in it. Now we're going to bring it over to our visor buck and slowly but firmly push this droopy plastic over the visor buck and that shop vac is going to suck all the air out and form that plastic sheet around the visor buck. Now you see me grab my compressed air gun again and start blowing around the outside. That's just to cool it down a little bit quicker. I was making eight visors that day so I wanted to keep things moving and helping cool the plastic down after it's been formed will make it easier to peel off. Now that the visor has cooled down a bit, we can start working it out of the plastic. Now this is a little bit tricky because the plastic is so well formed around the corners of the visor buck that it takes a little bit of wiggling to get the visor buck out, but you want to do it slowly so that you don't accidentally scuff the visor. But once the visor buck is pulled out, we have our clear visor now. I'll hold it up to the light to confirm the clarity of the plastic. That's why we were so careful to clean off any dust or make sure that no dust particles landed on the visor buck or plastic sheet because we want this visor to be as crystal clear as possible. Next, I'm going to take some tin snips and trim around the visor, recycle all that excess plastic. You can just use regular scissors for this, but the plastic is a bit thick and I just found that the strength of tin snips works pretty well for cutting this plastic pretty efficiently, especially if you're doing a batch of these visors and are trimming out multiple at a time. And now we can start to work on dyeing the visor its golden yellow color. So before we dye the visors, we want to make sure that the surface is as clean as possible. So we're going to scrub down both sides of the visor with this Plast-X plastic cleaning solution. I'm going to buff out both sides of the visors with this stuff, making sure I'm wearing a glove with the hand that holds the visor so I don't get any fingerprints on it, and then drying it off with a microfiber towel. Once all of the visors are buffed, we are going to grab a big pot of water with enough water in it to fully submerge all of the visors, and then we're going to want to bring that water to a boil. Once the water is boiling, we can add our dye packet to the water. Now it's important that you use the iDye Poly dye because it's specifically made for plastic. The boiling water will dissolve the outer baggie of the dye and release the dye into the water, so you can just plop it right in along with the color intensifier liquid as well. We can't put the visors in yet, otherwise they would start to melt at this temperature, so we need to wait for that water temperature to cool down to around 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, once our visor dyed liquid has cooled down to around 140 degrees Fahrenheit, we are ready to put these visors in. We're going to just put them all in, give the pot a stir, and then let them sit for around 10 minutes while the dye starts to do its work. After 10 minutes is up, we'll put a glove on so we don't accidentally dye our fingers and transfer all of the visors into a cool pot of water to kind of solidify that dye in and to prevent the visors from overheating. You can see that the visors are now yellow, but they're not super yellow. So it's going to take a few more iterations of the dye, cold water, dye, cold water, before I would consider these fully dyed. So as you can see, after each 10 minute soak in the dye, 
The visors are getting darker and darker until after about five times soaking in the dye, they are a deep enough golden yellow that we are ready to proceed with the next step. So now that all of the visors are dyed a nice golden yellow, we're going to take them out of the tank and let them air dry overnight. Then we're going to polish them all off again to remove any of the water stains left from the air drying and to make sure that the surface is clean for our chrome paint. Now what we're going to do is spray some Spastix Mirror Chrome on the inside of the visor. This is what gives the visor its reflectivity so that you can't see inside the visor, but you can still see outside it. Now we're going to be painting this on with an airbrush, and our challenge here is to get a consistent coating of the paint so that when viewed from the outside, it is a uniform looking shine. Now the reflectivity can vary based on your lighting situation, so that's why you see me go outside and check it in the bright light as well as in the dim light. Now you'll want to be very careful with this paint because it is very sensitive and you can smudge it very easily, but once it's installed inside a helmet, I think it looks absolutely perfect. So there you go guys, that is how I make my Master Chief visors. Hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you again.